Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. We're exploring research level mathematics and I'm giving you some advice. I want to talk about especially the difference between exact mathematics and approximate mathematics and I want to do it in the context of linear algebra and matrix theory. So in general, in terms of linear algebra, I have a more concrete and geometrical approach which is being slowly created into a uh, an online course which will be called Geometric Linear Algebra 1. So I hope that uh, some of these uh, insights are going to be uh, shared there and available to you at some point. So in today's lecture what we want to do is we want to look at the various powerful algorithms that drive modern linear algebra that are related to matrices. And I want to separate them into those which are exact and those which are approximate. And I think this is a really important distinction because from a theoretical point of view, it's the exact algorithms that tend to dominate. Practically speaking, the approximate algorithms may be very important, but we want to separate them. And so to do that, I'm going to have a very specific look at a particular matrix, and we're going to run through using scientific workplace these various algorithms that will... Um, that can work on matrices. Okay, so let us start by creating a matrix. Okay, I'm going to go to matrices. Here in Scientific Workplace is a list of the various uh, algorithms that deal with matrices. We're going to look at most of them, but not all of them. And the first thing that we're going to do is get a matrix. A yeah, 4 by 4 matrix sounds good. Maybe one with random entries. How's that? Okay, so there's... Uh, a matrix and we're going to apply these various algorithms to this matrix and see what we get. The first one is the adjugate. The adjugate of a 4 by 4 is another 4 by 4 matrix which you can think of as being more or less an inverse. Okay? It's more or less like the inverse except that you're not dividing by the determinant. But we can see that this is clearly an exact algorithm. Okay, So this definitely fits in the exact box. Our next Algorithm is the characteristic polynomial. Very important polynomial. This is a degree four polynomial that's associated with this matrix. And uh, this is you know, absolutely key. And it's clear that that's also an exact algorithm because we're getting exact integer values here. Great. Okay, next on our list is the Cholesky decomposition. What is that? Well, it's a way of expressing the matrix as a product of a lower triangular matrix times an upper triangular matrix. And you can see that there's a fair number of square roots floating around, and that means that this is not an exact algorithm. Whenever you take a square root, you're moving outside the framework of exact arithmetic. You're basically saying, okay, there's this algorithm that keeps on going and going and going and never stops, and we have to truncate this algorithm at some point to actually get something that we can concretely work with. So it's necessarily approximate. The Cholesky decomposition uh, will have to be moved. Okay, so let's move that to others. Next on the list is the condition number. So let's uh, see what that is matrices condition number. All right, that's a, a decimal number. It's given to five places here, but that's just because of the resolution that I've set um, for scientific workplace. That's in general a decimal number, so it's only approximate. All right, next is a definiteness test, telling whether their matrix is positive definite or not. This one is not positive definite, so it's indefinite. That's an exact test. It's more or less yes or no. The next one is the determinant, which is certainly one of the most important invariants. It's a number associated to the matrix, and that's clearly an exact algorithm. The next one are eigenvalues. Okay, what's happened here? Oh my goodness, those are the eigenvalues of this 4 by 4 matrix as computed by Scientific Workplace. Where is this coming from? Well, this is the, the modern attempt at writing an exact solution. Basically, what you have to do is you have to uh, solve the, uh, the characteristic uh, 
polynomial, you set it equal to zero, and you're finding the zeros of that characteristic polynomial. So uh, this program has not yet discovered my solving polynomial equation series of lectures. I hope you're, you're watching that or have watched that. Um, if it had, then it would know that this is an almost pointless uh, exercise to write something down like this. It's almost of zero use. Uh, it's much better to actually look at the whole problem in, in this other way uh, using um, power series and connections with uh, the combinatorics around the Catalan story, as, as you will know if you've done that. Okay, so, but in any case, it's absolutely clear that this is not an exact algorithm. And it's really important to appreciate this, okay, that, that eigenvalues, and in fact, eigenvectors too, I'm not even going to try to um, find the eigenvectors because um, that will likely hang up on my computer. So if you used a Mathematica or, or MATLAB or something like this, you could easily get the eigenvectors, but they're going to be given to you in, in decimal formats. And this, it's necessarily an approximate kind of story. The eigenvalues and eigenvectors are very important for applications, so there's no denying that. But we have to recognize that they are not, there's not exact algorithms for these things because there's irrationalities in, involved. We only have sort of approximate algorithms. Okay, what's next on our list? Um, next on our list, I guess, is this fraction-free Gaussian elimination. Yeah, it's sort of like row reduction of some kind, okay, where we're trying to avoid fractions. So there it is there, and you can see that that's an exact algorithm. And closely related to that is just ordinary Gaussian elimination, okay, where basically you're getting it in sort of... Um, um, well, this is kind of row, rock, row echelon kind of form, um, and it's this is a, a key step in, in actually solving linear equations that are associated with the matrix. And this thing here, it does use fractions, but it's still exact integer arithmetic, so that is still an exact algorithm. Next, we have the Hermite normal form. What's that going to look like? Well, that's uh, also something that's exact. I think I talk about that in my Math Foundations uh, series at some point. Okay, and then we have what's probably the, almost surely the most important algorithm in linear algebra, which is calculating the inverse of a square matrix. So here's the inverse there. It's a lot like the adjugate, except that there's a denominator. The denominator is the determinant. Okay, so the inverse is an important calculation, which is exact. Great. Okay, uh, next. Uh, Matrices. The next one is Jordan form. I'm a little bit nervous about Jordan form um, because if you're not able to calculate eigenvalues um, a, a, approximately so easily, then you're, you're going to struggle with Jordan form. So um, I'm going to just let you know that the Jordan form, which is some kind of diagonalization, okay, uh, of, of a matrix, it's the basic idea, trying to get it into diagonal form or, or as close to diagonal form as possible. It really relies on um, being able to calculate eigenvalues of, well, maybe not the matrix, but a related matrix. And eigenvalues is uh, an approximate algorithm. So Jordan form is also an approximate algorithm. How about minimal polynomial? Well, the minimum polynomial is much like the characteristic polynomial. In this case, it's the same. But sometimes it's different. But in any case, that's still an exact calculation. Then we have the norm. Okay, the norm is... Well, it's it's somehow u utilizing the Euclidean structure of a space on which this thing acts, and that is an approximate algorithm, as you can sort of see from the, the fact that we're getting a decimal rather than a, a fraction. So norm has to be moved over here. Null space spaces. So that's basically setting the uh, the matrix A, looking at uh, AX equals zero, okay, and finding a basis for the null space. Uh, this one here has non-zero determinants, so there is no uh, null space, so that doesn't give us anything. But in, still, it's a it's an exact um, algorithm. Orthogonality test. Well, that's going to be. Uh, so it's not an orthogonal matrix. That's clearly exact, just a, sort of a yes or no or false or true. 
The permanent, the permanent of a matrix is another important number. It's obviously related to the determinant, but it's a little bit different. But it's it's basically uh, you're looking at the same kinds of sums of products of entries of the matrices, but with a the determinant, there's lots of plus and minus ones that are uh, factors, and with the permanent, you, you, everything is just a plus. Okay, we come to the PLU decomposition, which is uh, quite important, and this is uh, again a, a product of. Uh, well, permutation matrix, that's the P, a lower triangular matrix, that's the L, and an upper triangular matrix, that's the U, so PLU decomposition. And you can see this is exact, and it's somehow pretty closely related to Gaussian elimination, sort of keeping track of what happens with Gaussian elimination. Most of the time, this permutation matrix is the identity, that's sort of the generic uh, story, but for special cases, you can get, have other permutation matrices appearing here. But in any case, that's still an exact calculation. QR decomposition. Well, uh, this is a, a product uh, in terms of um, matrix Q, which is typically orthogonal matrix and some upper triangular matrix here. But you can see there's lots of square roots around. So our QR decomposition has to be moved from the exact algorithms to the other. Next, we have rank, rank of a matrix. Oh, it's down here, it's four, sorry. Put it up here. The rank is four, and that's clearly exact. Next, we have rational canonical form. And you can see this is rational, as the term suggests, and it's another kind of expansion or writing, writing the matrix as a, as a product of, of particular kinds of, of matrices. But that certainly is still exact because we're just getting rational numbers. Reduced row echelon form, that's the result of row reduction. Well, not surprisingly, that's also exact. And now we come to singular values. I'm going to say this. Um, that's the next. Singular values. So when we get singular values, let's see if we can compute this thing. Matrices, singular values. There they are. The singular values of this matrix are given in decimal. So they are, they're basically eigenvalues, but not eigenvalues of the matrix, eigenvalues of something else. And so those are approximate. So singular values moves into the other category. Form. Yes, yeah, Smith normal form, we can see that's exact. And now spectral radius. Again, that's, um, it's a, a decimal there, um, also has something to do with eigenvalues. So that's also uh, approximate and we'll take it and put it in the approximate category. And now we have the singular value decomposition. And okay, it's a bunch of matrices and a, a diagonal matrix. You can see that the entries are, are decimal numbers here. That means they're only given up to a certain amount of accuracy. That's definitely a approximate algorithm. And finally, we only have two more. The trace, of course, is just the sum of the diagonal entries. So that's a completely exact algorithm. And finally, the transpose of the matrix. Easy enough, that's, of course, also exact. Great. So that's sort of a lightning tour of a lot of important algorithms. If you, if you understand all these algorithms and what they're doing, uh, you have a pretty good handle on linear algebra. Okay, for sure. And uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to get you to think very broadly in terms of the difference between exact algorithms and approximate algorithms. Okay, so the others here are approximate. And this is a very important uh, distinction in mathematics that I, I think is really great for even amateur mathematicians to be aware of. You want to try to frame theories in terms of these exact algorithms when you can.